Here I'm just making them the first couple of doors uh, for the top boxes of the wardrobe. Um, reason being is that this particular door is going to be fixed. It won't be a door, it's just a dummy door. Um, and the reason for that is because I want a shelf to come out of that to run across above the windows of helmet sort of uh, shelf. And that's going to be for a bookstore, so we can put books all the way along it. Um, but I need that in place first so I can get the true measurement of it. And I couldn't do that afterwards. Um, the other, this is going to be a door. Um, it's hinged, which this is what this piece is for, um, for the hinges to go on to. And centre support. Um, open up, you see, a hole for the handle. They'll all do that, hole for the handle. This piece will go behind the front trim, the, the pine trim that I've got. Um, giving me a stop for the door to stop against, otherwise it just goes straight in. Um, now that's how we're going to finish all the doors. They're made of MDF, the bull nosed over, um, and I've routed out the other side for the, or drilled out um, for the hinges, um, which will be standard cabinet hinges, soft close cabinet hinges on all of them. Um, and, and that's all it is. I've had to do a, a, a primer coat first. Just this, this standard Rustin's um, primer, and yeah, primer. Um, Build that first over all of it, um, and then it's had, it's had about three coats of silk vinyl, um, brilliant white silk vinyl, which has given it a nice sheeny feel to it. And it it's, it's a nice feel, nice look, um, and it will stand out good. So that's what we're doing. So that's it. Um, now um, tomorrow we'll fit them. And this is what it looks like when it's uh, fitted. As you can see there, one panel is um, rigid and that one opens. Nice and simple. Now you can see I put a little stop down the side there. Um, it's just a piece of uh, ply again that should have been painted up so it blends in. And we've got nice soft closing so they can't be left open. Hinges. There. Right, what I need to do now is make a shelf to go from the middle of this side, which is approximately here, and the back on it there, forming a pelmet across over the window, um, and I want it to go that way across to the other side, which is uh, over two meters. So it's quite a sizable bookcase. So I need to make it very strong. Um, but I'm going to cap it again the same as this with this uh, three-inch thick stuff across the front of it. Um, and the back will have a, a full plate going up to the ceiling, blocking off the window completely. But I don't want to come down any lower than the lintel above the window. I want to keep it level with that. Um, so I need to come out a reasonable amount. In fact, I'm, I'm 40 mil in from the edge of this door. When I finished, I'm like 40 mil in that way, and that's it. Um, so it's, it's quite, that's why I've done that, a blank panel so big. Right, so <laughs> to the workshop and get that done. Okay, so uh, for the shelf, now two metres long, it needs to be very strong. So what I'm using is this um, half inch 10 mil ply. It's marine ply, it's very dense, very strong stuff. And it's double sided with formica. Um, one side a decorative side, the other side just a plain balancer. Um, I'm going to laminate two of these together using contact adhesive. So it will become a 20 mil thick piece. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to set, I'm going to uh, router these ends. I want um, a quarter of the hour on one end and the bung nose on the other. But I'm not going to bother changing the bit over for one bung nose. Uh, we'll just quarter around twice. Right, um, easy for manoeuvring. Drop the couple of sticks on. It won't stick. We've got no contact this on. Turn the piece over onto it. Position correct first. Okay, this is the wall plate for the other side. Um, 
And what I've done is I've cut obviously the shape of the ceiling as it's going to go up there. Um, and I've marked on where I want the pieces to go. This is a single one at the back, and then we've got the double one at the bottom. Now we've got the set again for this one. Different is this time to it so we need to know where to stop. Stop. Well that's the point I want to lift up. I want to move these, that jaw I want to put to that side of the blade. Well that's the uh, trim done, um, stained up, ready, I'll just wait for it to uh, dry and then tomorrow I can wax it. Now I just want to get this, I've given it a light sanding but I don't want to over sand it because it's already been sealed. And if I sand it too much, then I'll have to be sealing it again. Yeah, I'll just get that in. Right. It's been stood a while. Don't want to get too much into the slots, the, the rebates, because um, it will tighten up the pieces. This one doesn't matter. This has got already slackness. This is tight. So when it gets in there, you get it back out. I'll let that coat dry for 10 15 minutes, that's all. Um, and then I shall give it a proper coat. That would just help bond things together. Now what I want to do here is, um, this is the shelf, the bottom part of the shelf. And this is going to be the front runner that will sit on it, giving it that um, match in appearance of the rest. But also it gives it that um, strength, almost like putting a, a beam across the front of it. Um, so suddenly that shelf becomes that thick. Um, the back wall uh, is, is, as you've seen, 300, or just short of 300 mil deep. So again, that's almost as strong as an i um, Now, I'm setting the biscuits like I've done. I'm doing this little sample here. A little sample. Very strong with joints. Um, I'll set it down so that it's catching the bottom half. Um, now, this is, um, I have to actually explain that, but this is two pieces laminated together um, to give me the, the thickness of it because I want it very really strong. It's going to carry a lot of books on that. And it'll be over the kids' heads, so a lot of emphasis on making sure this thing is strong. Um, so, putting the biscuits in the bottom and into that allows me, oops, wrong way around, allows me to have it like that. As you can see, it's good and solid. So, that's what I'm doing now. I've just um, set it up so that I can, with a pencil, mark it all out on the biscuits. Now set the uh, depth stop, so if I sit it that way, it gives me a gap, and then that I can sit on the top of that one, and the bottom of it. That's the idea. That makes everything ready for the
Okay, now we're ready to get it over and get it installed. Right, I've already got the uh, wall plate up there, as you saw me manufacture that and painted it into the colour required. Um, and then the backing plate, which has got brackets on it, stretches across to the other side. Now on the other side, this blanking plate that formed for the door, um, I've put a, a, a guide piece of wood there, just so that I know where I'm going. Now I've drilled the holes in ready, just so that it's a big piece of wood and uh, I need all the help I can get when I'm getting up there. Um, so now I'm just ready to lift the thing in place. silicon into this part because there's no way of putting fixings in other than this. Can't put screws through it or anything like that without showing them. Okay, that's good and solid at the both ends. Now I'm just going to uh, screw all the brackets supporting the back, attaching the back to the bottom completely. solid but the pump was still giving and that's because I need this piece to give it that extra strength and to decorate it. Just get some glue in the biscuit slots first. Eight biscuits, enough to feed a decent sized family. Now it's going to hold everything. Right, I'll just get some clamps on there to pull it tight and leave it an hour. There we have it. I'll just leave that now there to set. Now I'll get the books on and see what's going on. I'm going to put some decorated stalk across the top there just to stop the light coming through. Just there, bond it to it, just so we don't get any coming through. And that's it, hold on.
Well, what I'm actually making here is a, a magazine shelf to go onto the shelf in the middle. Um, just to give, so obviously magazines you can't stand up right, and there's quite a few magazines I've got. Um, so they'll lay down flat that way. The idea is that uh, I'll have one magazine line there, another magazine line this way, going that way. Then on the top, the magazine going across the top of them, because we get a little bit slope here, so you don't get that many in the And I do a magazine, bump sits perfectly into there like that. So that would be, that would be suitable. Right, just to make the uh, inner pieces now. Right, throw my pulls and dents off, and uh, pretty much that's it. That's how it'll go in. Nice and simple, nice and easy. And there it is, in situ. It's not fastened down, I've just leave, left it there floating, so it can act also as a, a book stop, so I can slide it along to support the books. Um, but it serves the purpose, and as you can see now, the book is the, the bookshelf is fully laden, and as you can gather, it's holding the weight without any problem at all. So that's made that very useful, um, and also as you can see here, I do still have plenty of void there for the curtain track, so I can get to it to work on it. Shouldn't it do anything? I could probably be placed out without any problem at all. A little right angle screwdriver. Um, so that's that. That's um, the bookshelf completed. The next project is 
the drawers which I need uh, two there two there and two there then are just temporary ones that are there at the moment um, I needed to get the uh, pumps on before I could do this do this properly and work out exactly what it was I needed um, but now they are uh, thicker so I need uh, thicker than the body the, the side walls so I need to put um, pieces in where the runners are going to go just to pack it out I think it's about 30 mil or something oh, 35 mil so I just need to put packers in there and um, the drawer runners can go on and then I can make the drawers and they'll be made um, to match exactly to what um, that one does so as you can see from that we've got the uh, uh, let's just get a shot on it properly you can see that it's sunk in and nice and flush with the timber surrounds and that's how I want all the jaws to be the same so it's back to the workshop and carry on <laughs> 